guys so oh, good afternoon and all oh, good evening and of course it could be let me just move this over it could be a good night depending on where you are in the world well guys uh, this is part two to a live coaching series that i am putting together starting actually next week thursday which i believe is the first of um december 2016 and what this is all about is getting prepared for 2017 and in order to be prepared for 2017 to utilize the universal laws consciously to manifest what it is that you want you actually need to know what you want and you need to know what you want with some clarity so last week what we looked at was um, your ability to choose for self. And this is very, very, very important. Most people, while they do make choices, they sometimes have a, a, a very, very hard time choosing in the best interest of self for self. And this is for a variety of reasons, not limited to a sense of duty, um, not limited to knowing your own self-worth and definitely not limited to not knowing what you want. There are so many things, you know, guilt, all, all these things, you know, if I would have, should have, could have, and maybe I shouldn't, maybe I'm not good enough and blah, 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 blah. There are all these sorts of things that actually impact you, that actually impact you and your ability to make choices for self in the best interest of self. And so, um, again, last week we looked at uh, you and your ability to make choices for self. Now, hopefully you downloaded the PDF and the PDF is actually found in the group, the Laws of Attraction in Action in the group um, under the tab. I think the tab, not I think, the tab's actually called, I'm looking to go here because I'm going to actually put this on the screen. It just makes it, I'm thinking, a little easier. Um, so, so the tab is actually um, file, the file tab, and you can actually find the PDFs, all the PDFs that, that I'm going to be talking about, you can find them on the file tab. So today, what we are actually talking about is the SWOT, which is um, S-W-O-T. I really kind of like this S W O T, and that's actually an an acronym that's used for strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. And this is something that's actually used in the business arena when people are looking at their their competition, where they want to strategically and tactically place themselves so, uh, so that they can, you know, I don't know, clean the market up, have the best advantage for what it is that they are, are wanting to do. It's actually a really excellent, um, it's, it's an excellent tool that I believe and that I have used and that I believe that you can use to assist and support you in getting more clarity because guys the more clarity you have the easier it is going to become and will be for you to be able to create what it is that you are wanting to create for yourself um, for 2017 so SWOT I have my paper here so um, SWOT Again, it's an it's an acronym that used that talks about strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. And on the um, p on the PDF slide over on on the PDF, it just sort of talks a little bit about that. And then I go into I go in to talk about how a SWOT can be applied to any area 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 of your life. This is your health, wealth. Um, finances, careers, you know, whatever it is, it can be applied. And it will help you to define areas that you feel, not what anybody else feels, because all of this is about you. So it will give you um, 
information on where you feel you need to define, to refine, to hone, to shore up, to work on whatever comes down the pike so that you can be ready for 2016. So on, on the workout sheet I have here that um, the following is an example of a, of a SWOT. And this is conducted on a relationship. And actually the relationship was actually my relationship. So I used me as the, um, as the uh, example here. But again, um, the SWOT can be conducted on any kind of relationship because at the end of the day, everything that you are in communication with, everything that you are touching, you are in a relationship with it. You are totally in a relationship with it. So um, it can be con your SWOT can be conducted on any area of your life. Really important to understand that any area of your life. And as I said, this is an example. And I used myself as an example for this. So on your on your workout sheet, again, that's downloadable from the uh, the group in the file tab you'll be able to download this, this PDF. So I said, let's take a look at a typical relationship. And in this instance, we're going to take a look at a marriage, which is my marriage partnership, whatever you want to call it. And we'll explore the following by applying the SWOT to this type of relationship. So again, SWOT, the acronym is strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and, thre and threats. So in regard to my relationship, in regard to my marriage, number one, strength. What strengths, what strengths do I bring to the relationship? What strengths do I bring to the marriage? Very, very important. So for me, for instance, if there is something that needs to be done, do I follow through and ensure that it gets done in a timely fashion? Well, yes, I do. I'm on it like white on rice. So in that regard, that is a strength that um, adds to um, myself as I show up in the marriage? So the answer to that is yes. And again, it's really important, guys. I don't know how, um, how hard to stress this, that this be about you. It's not what people think about you or what people have said about you. It's what you believe to be true about you in this instance, that is of vital importance. So we have weaknesses. And I know this to be true about myself. Weakness. And a weakness isn't something um, to be looked on as a negative. In this instance, we are just recognizing things that you may need to look at, things that you may need to do, things or at least you may need to be aware of. So when you come up, um, against a situation that might require you to do X, Y, Z, you are already like, okay, perhaps I need to uh, approach this differently. So with it, within the context of my marriage, a weakness. Now, weakness is I don't negotiate well, and I am really, really, really impatient. It's like, now, 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 what? Now, w w what do you mean you can't wash up now? Or you're not washing up fast enough, of the, you know. So it, it's it's definitely about um, now. It's all about the now. I, I, I'm impatient, and an opportunity. What opportunities do I bring to this union? Well, I have clear vision, and I have to say that I am fair in my assessment of people and things, or people, places, and things. I have clear vision, so I bring that to the equation. And that's an opportunity because that can allow for an expansion. And something that is a threat that can undermine how I show up in this relationship, in, in my marriage, is that I always think I'm right. <laughs> and at the end of the day, I you know, that that's just, no, that, that's not true. I'm not always right. But shh. We'll just pretend I didn't say that, okay? But I always think I'm right. So realizing that, use, using this information, it can help me when I am, um, I'm, I'm talking to my husband, D, about something. It can help me when I'm trying to figure out 
um, what we're going to do or what I'm going to do in regard to X, Y, Z within, within, within the marriage or, you know, within the home, something that's going to affect both of us. And so therefore, all of this becomes a strength. Now, it's really important that you utilize or, or when you do your, your SWOT, that you truly do it with honesty, with truth and recognizing that it isn't about anybody else but you. It's not about anybody else but you. It's just about you. It's not about anybody else. It's not what anybody else thinks. It's not what your spouse thinks. It's not what your family thinks. It's not it's not what the church thinks. It's not what the government thinks. It's, you know, it's not what your friends think or your BFF. It's, it's no, it's just about you. You know, guys, I know that you, you may have heard the, um, well, if you've, if you've ever flown, um, they will definitely tell you that, you know, if the gas mask or excuse me, the oxygen mask deploys, that you need to put it on yourself first. If you have people who are in in need of your assistance, you know, or if you're if you're if you're in a, a, a cruising, you're in a in a ship or, or a boat or something, and you know that you need to uh, put on your your life vest. They tell you to put yours on first, so that you are able to be to, to assist people who need it. And this is what this is about. This is about doing you first, so that then you are able to through how you show up, be able to assist and support others who need it. So um, a personal, another way to look at the SWOT is this. It can start out by, let me do it this way. It can start out by um, conducting an emotional SWOT on yourself. And this is what I mean about this. It it can be anything. You You can use this anywhere in your life you know finances you know you know what, what, strength in finances are you a good saver no okay all right um um or yes i am a good saver weakness in in finances you know i just randomly shop i buy i buy walks w o k i buy walks i do and that's 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 a truism i buy walks i'll see a walk and i'm like oh my god that's so beautiful. I, I've got to have it. You know, like how people buy shoes and handbags and jewelry. I buy walks. I, d- uh, I don't ask. I, I, I don't know where that comes from, but I, I buy walks. So um, opportunities in finance, the ability, I'll just say, to, to save, you know, um, and, and a threat with, uh, with finance is perhaps not having um, a long term goal for finances. So again, you can apply this anywhere. But the one that I was actually going to talk to you about was, and that was just off the top of my head, that was, um, was conducting an emotional SWOT. And you start start out by asking yourself, what are my emotional strengths? What are my true emotional strengths? You know, really, what? And one of the true emotional strengths, as I see it, is that I am not afraid during an emergency. During an emergency, I am cool, calm, collective. Uh, my, my thought process is on point, um, absolutely on point. After the emergency, maybe not so much, but during and 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 figuring out what this feeling means. The, this is something that's definitely a strength. Um, what's a weakness? I have this erroneous belief and this desire to want to fix everybody. And I'm afraid if they are unhappy, that somehow it's my fault and I'll be unhappy too. And so this actually has the ability to undermine not only me, but the people in my life. Because everybody is whole, capable, and complete, and nobody needs to be fixed. Absolutely nobody needs to be fixed. So that's the weakness, the W of the SWAT. The O, what are my emotional opportunities? Well, the opportunity is, or the opportunities emotionally that I create for myself is, I'm able to see past my fears. 
And I'm able to see past my fears and realize that I cannot fix people and that people need to fix themselves if indeed there's something that needs to be fixed. So the opportunity there allows me to grow. And if I grow and show up, it gives you permission to do the same thing. And what do I consider to be an emotional th threat? I can take things too bloody personally. Girlfriend, it ain't about you. They're just having a bad day. Don't take it personally. And so I can take it personally. And so uh, I can take things too personally. So when you are able to, um, when you are able to correlate this information, which is what we're going to use uh, starting next week, when you're able to correlate this information, it will really assist and support you in getting clear and realizing this is for me, that's not for me. Yes, I can compromise. No, I can't compromise. It will seriously help you with this. So just as a recap, last week, we looked at the choice making equation. And in the choice making equation, what we actually looked at was um, what must you have for 2017? What do you need to have for 2017? What are you wanting to have for 2017? And what are you dreaming of for 2017? And the dreaming, as I said, I said last week, and I'm saying it again, the dreaming for me is where my focus goes, but that's where my focus goes. We looked at the uh, choice making equation and recognizing that it is so important for you to be a part of your choice making equation. Many people, they'll, they'll want something or they'll think something and they're, they are in, they're trying to make a choice, but yet still they choose to be influenced by what somebody thinks is best for them. And in reality, it isn't because you see your choice begins with you and it ends with you. It's all about you. So therefore, there's nothing wrong with taking advice. There's absolutely nothing wrong by being influenced. And we are all influenced. But you get to choose who influences you, how they influence you, and the betterment, how, how this works for you. You get to choose how this works for you, as opposed to allowing it to work you. There's a, there's a big difference. It's like, Okay, I'll phrase it this way. It's like, how does 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 money work for you, or do you work for money? Therein lies the difference. Does money work for you, or do you work for money? And it's that's the same thing with um, you, your emotions being influenced the whole nine yards. So this week, which is where are we? Where are we? We are the 21st, actually. Today's the 21st of uh, November. So this week, we looked at the SWOT. And again, you can download, download the PDF. And guys, go through your own SWOT. Ask yourself the questions. You know, strength. What strengths do I truly feel that I be, bring to whatever it is? You know, whether it be finances, emotion, health, whatever it is, what strengths do I bring? So on that note, guys, um, I'll be joining you next week, Thursday. I might do a little thing on Monday because we are going to, and that's the 29th, because we're going to kick off on Thursday morning and we're going to start this process. And this process is, as I said in the first uh, video to you guys, the first Facebook Live, the process is simply this, one of the, or the type of coaching or one of the type in co coaching methodologies that I am trained in and the one that I use is as an intrinsic coach. And what that means basically, guys, is I don't need to hear your response. You need to hear your response. You need to hear your response. And so when I go through the process of asking questions and what I'm going to do is have you, you know, either um, use your phones or write it down or whatever's most comfortable for you. And I'm going to go through a process of asking you some questions. And 
right here just online i'm going to ask you some questions and week after week i'm going to ask you questions and add little things interjections in between and this is how we're going to coach and believe me it works it works so guys on that note i'm dr wendy dearborn until next time which will be most probably next week mon monday knowing that we kick off on thursday until next week i'm dr wendy dearborn so guys have a wonderful thanksgiving peace